Welcome to this week's edition of Mob Talk. I'm Dave Schrattweiser. And I'm George Anastasia with the Philadelphia Inquirer. George, everywhere I go these days, people who watch Mob Talk are saying, is the indictment coming and who's in and who's out? But maybe we ought to talk about who's a target and who's yeah. not. It's that time of the year. And I think, as we've been saying all along, something's coming. The question is when. All right, George, let's stress nobody's been charged. There's been no indictments. But let's talk about targets. Right. And let's start at the top. Let's start with Joe Legambi. Seems to be enjoying his summer right now. Start of the summer season with Memorial Day weekend just passed. But uh, trouble down the line. Yeah, I mean, but you know what? I mean, we talked about this last year at this time. We said, oh, they're going to get through the summer. We're in the same situation again. Clearly, from everybody you're talking to and I'm talking to, he's the number one target of an ongoing federal investigation. That's no secret. I mean, that came out during... The racketeering trial in 2001, when Merlino and those guys were convicted, they talked about Legambi being the guy in charge, and Legambi was the guy they were watching. Yeah, it's unusual to bring a big mob indictment and not have the boss named, yeah. so you're in the number one spot, you're the number one target. Yeah, that's a given. I think if it comes, when it comes, he's the, he's the primary guy, and then the question is who, in addition to him, is in the crosshairs. All right, so let's go down to the next level, and that would normally be the underboss. The word these days is that Marty Angelina is the underboss. At we know the, he's on the list. Yeah, I mean, he's the underboss, at least in name. I don't know if he functions so much as the underboss, but I think that's that's his rank from everybody we're talking to. And, yeah, he's another guy who almost can't stay out of trouble. So, yeah, if you're putting together a list of targets, Legambi, Angelino are one, two. All right, now we get to the number three man. That's generally believed to be Anthony Stano from South Jersey, uh, Consigliere, whatever position he holds at this point. He was allegedly the underboss at yeah. one point, and now he's probably in the number three spot because he's Joe Legambi's right hand man his most trusted guy yeah I mean he's Legambi's go-to guy whatever his designation consigliere or, or capo or underboss he's the guy I think Legambi's most comfortable with and he probably knows more about what's going on the inner workings of the organization than anybody other than Legambi okay a few months ago we had a big uh, video poker bust by the state right. some of that's going to be federal because we saw the FBI there that day and one of the guys names who came up Who's, who came up in that investigation was Gaten Luchabella, who used to be a captain, is now a soldier. Yeah, I mean, I think Gaten is another guy who, if you say they're looking at the organization and what it does, video poker machine is big, it's a big money maker. So, yeah, it's logical to say he's another guy that is on that target list. Okay, let's go to a couple people. Uh, one who's still in jail, George Borghese. Yeah. Um, he is the nephew of Joe Legambi. Yeah. Uh, believed to be involved in other gambling operations in Delaware County with some other folks, things like that. If we see an indictment, do you believe you'll be on there as a potential target? I think two things. One, if some of that Delaware County investigation is incorporated, and that goes back to Ben Finger, Lou Monticello, and the cooperator, Frankie, that fixes the Giacomo. Right. If some of that becomes part of the racketeering case, then yeah, I think there's a good chance that Borghese is included in this. The other thing is, do they make any of the murder cases? Do they have enough to bring that Ralphie Mazuka murder? Mm -hmm. If that becomes part of the case, then certainly look, uh, Borghese will be a part of that because his name is always figured prominently in that investigation. Mm -hmm. Third thing is he's the nephew of Legambi and I guess the fourth thing which has nothing at all to do with the facts but he is not very well liked in you terms of going. Yeah. He's not the most well liked guy among uh, yeah. federal investigators. How about that? Yeah exactly and if there's any way they could tweak him, shake, his, shake the tree, make him a little nervous they'd be happy to do that even by simply putting him in the indictment even if the case is not as strong as they would like it to be. They just don't like Borghese. Alright now if they go down that trail, they got to go near Bent Finger Lou Monticello. Right. I mean, he was Borghese's point man in Delaware County. He's been convicted in Delaware County for that bookmaking extortion operation and some other things. And if, in fact, that gets tied into the federal investigation, certainly Bent Finger Lou is a part of it. Okay. Joey Merlino is about six or eight months away from potentially being released to a halfway house, possibly in Florida. Have you heard his name, and do you think he's a target here? I think if he's a target, it's a long shot kind of thing, and, and I think it really depends on whether they include any of the other murders in this case, and we're not really sure if they're going to have enough to put that kind of stuff in. Absent that, I don't think he makes the cut this time, which he'll probably be happy to hear. Well, and they, they were 0 for 3 the last time right. when it came to murders with him in the last exactly. racketeering trial in 2001. Do they want to take that shot unless they have a sure bet? I don't think they want to be embarrassed again, yeah. and I think they won't bring a murder charge unless they think they can make the case and get the conviction, which they didn't do last time out. All right, let's talk about a real stand-up guy here, Steve Mazzone, uh, who did his time, kept his mouth shut, didn't complain, has come out, went to work like he's supposed to, has stayed below the radar screen, uh, has not been seen in too many places. He had a little bit of a problem 
with showing up a couple of places that he shouldn't have been at right. Christmas parties and stuff like that. But your thoughts on whether you think he's a target in this go round? Uh, you know, his name doesn't come up in terms of any of the things we're talking about, the video poker machines and the other operations of the organization. So the question is, has he really separated from and put that life behind him, or is he simply taking a real low profile figure and to fill the vacuum when and if it's created? Don't know the answer to that, but that's the two scenarios that, that you think about and you, when you're looking at Steve Mazzone. And if something does happen to the rest of the guys, He's sitting right there at the top, is he Exactly. Not? I mean, that's, I mean, if you want to be a cynic, and some people in law enforcement are, they'll tell you that's what he's doing. He's just sitting back, mm -hmm. waiting, letting things play out, and then he'll move in. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's at least the take of some investigators. All right, George, we all know the feds. They're not coming with something that's half-baked, uh, half a load, so to speak, here. If they're coming, they're coming full bore. And what do you think is going to happen? Well, I, you know, it'll be a racketeering indictment. It'll cover the gamut of the things we're talking about. But the thing to remember is they supersede, they add to the indictment. And one of the strategies may be let's indict, put pressure on somebody, and get somebody to flip. That could be part of what we're talking about here. Okay. That's it for Mob Talk this week. We'll see you next week.